Hey, hi there Aquarius. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda, and I would like to thank you for tuning in to those energies and influences that are coming through for your weekend reading, November 22nd to the 24th of 2019. Crosswatcher energies are interchangeable, and please only take those portions that resonate with you. Okay, Aquarius, off camera I've performed a protective blessing. I've meditated over and shuffled these cards just for you. Your first card it's the general atmosphere. It's the basis and the issue of the matter. Number six of the major arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the lovers. This can be a Gemini, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Anywhere a Gemini is prominent in your chart or someone else's that you're dealing with. This is a card of choice. It is, it is having to do with a love relationship, union, sexuality, it's the fruitfulness of correct thought. It's being with a soulmate. It's choice and temptation and attraction. It's the struggle between sacred and profane love. It's harmony of the inner and outer aspects of life. It's learning and growing through relationships. Those trials. This is a soulmate card being meant for each other. An alignment. A balance between physical desire and spiritual needs. Sometimes this is a difficult choice. But the angel above them stands for truth and strength found in their relationship. That's the angel Raphael, the angel of air, with communication, because Mercury rules Gemini. This is an important and usually long-lasting relationship. There's attraction and love and beauty, and trials overcome. It's physical and emotional healing. This is a blessing. If you're single, it's time to let love come into your life. This is a critical life decision with a love relationship and being at a crossroads. Remember to act with your heart and choose the best version of yourself. And as long as you do what you love, everything else will follow naturally. This is cooperation. It's attraction of any kind that requires cooperation. And you will make the right choice. So be clear about your personal beliefs. This can be a choice between either two lovers or a business deal. This is free will that's being the objective here. Could be an attraction for something different coming. But you're about to evolve into a higher plane of understanding and communicate openly and honestly, and that will create harmonious and fulfilling relationships built on trust and respect. This is a blessed union. This is a union of opposites. You may need to consummate, consummate the relationship. This is a clear communication between if such a union is to take place. This can also be an attraction that's in the terms of an idea or an ideal. This can represent a future relationship. And you will make the right choice. There's attraction and cooperation and harmony and sharing true feelings. Your second card. And this is the energy that's crossing over your path. This can be your subconscious influences that you are unaware of. Number five of the major arcana, the Hierophant. This can be a Taurus. Sun, moon, rising Venus. This can be in your chart or someone else's. This is a card of rule by the conventional, it's traditional. It represents a belief system. This is orthodox teaching that's considerable suited to the masses. This can be a wise teacher or a mentor. Assistance from this wise and helpful person it has to do with spiritual truth and living by a higher code of conduct. It's the importance of social approval. It's the need to conform to society. This is a marriage card. And with the lover's card in here, this is one of the uh, combinations that represents love at first sight. This is making a vow, it's receiving a blessing, and letting reason be your guide, not passion. This represents marriage and alliance and love through helpful doctrine. It's social institutions, particularly marriage or formal relationships. This prompts spiritual thinking and learning. The lovers with the Hierophant card, this is a blessed union. It's love and spirituality, 
its partners with devotion. This is a significant love relationship that is meant to be. You two pretty much agree on everything. This can represent a wedding. And now your third card. This is how it affects you. These are the external influences that you are aware of. The Five of Wands, Aquarius. Fire energy. This is a card of unrest, competition. It can, it can be struggling. You can be trying to unify disparities. This can be a competition in social or career areas. All fives are pivotal turning points. This can represent someone Saturn being in Leo. You might need to put in more effort to keep what you've already gained. This can be mediation, challenge, struggle, petty obstacles, annoyances, short-term difficulties in communication. Once, once overcome can change things for the better. This can be fighting, it can be conflicts, it can also be child's play. It can also represent a building site, workshop, carpenters, creative chaos. It could be a competition of some sort, a card of ordeals, tests, lawsuits. This is someone that can be agitated, combative, confused. They might be bickering. They might be restructuring, working at cross purposes, enjoying rivalries. You'll need to agree or disagree. This can be real or playful rivalry. There are problems to solve and conflicts, some petty hassles, arguments, clashing of personalities, differences of opinion, but these differences should be examined. It is from them that new ideas and interesting compromises emerge, but be wary of stubbornly holding on to an idea just for the sake of it. The lovers with the five of wands, this can be playful bickering, squabbling, both give as good as they get. This can represent a relationship that can be challenging at times. It's making a choice not to participate in continued fighting. And now your fourth card. This is the card of the future. It's the results. It's the outcome and the resolution. And this can be a surprise being in the future position. The Nine of Cups, Aquarius. Yay! Your future, you get your wish. A dream coming true. It's good to be an Aquarius. My Aquarius is in my sun. Sun. This is uh, someone's Jupiter in Pisces. This card represents true satisfaction and contentment. Material wealth. Great joy and happiness and dreams coming true. Everything you want and hope for. It's gratitude and appreciating what you have now. It's overflowing love and intense pleasure. You're feeling really good or you soon will are going to be. This is a positive end to a problem that was quite important and it brings joy and success. A wish or a goal becomes realized. You're going to feel like you have it all. But be warned that your behavior is not coming off as smug or a braggart. This is the fulfillment of a desire of paramount importance. Emotional stability is indicated as well as physical and material happiness, sensual pleasure, satisfaction, enjoyment, peace and harmony that come from within you. So stay true to love and do something enjoyable together. This is being so full of appreciation, it's an outpouring of pleasure and the feelings of fullness from material and emotional pleasures. The uh, lovers with the nine of cups, this is a deepening of relationship. Love becomes sweeter and better. Romance levels up and you will feel like you're walking on air every day. It's hope for reunions and a rekindling of relationships, and you will get what you want. And now your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card, the underlying issue. This is what's unseen. It's unseen, it's because you're not sharing it with others yet, but you are consciously aware of this. The King of Wands, Aquarius, Fire Energy Person, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, moon, rising, Venus, anywhere that this fire element is prominent in someone's chart, yours or someone else's. More than likely, this is someone else. This is someone that's very attractive. You can rely on their honesty and intelligent. They're loyal and they're fair-minded and they give good advice. This can also refer to a situation in life which is exactly as it appears to be with no hint of deception. 
This can indicate good fortune coming your way. Could be in the form of unexpected help or advice, good news, a promotion, or an inheritance or settlement. This can represent passion for a project. It could be things that are spinning around in your head. This can be someone that's honest and friendly and passionate. They're strong with powerful belief in their self and their achievements. Yet they're impatient and, hast and, and hasty and they dislike detail. Yet they're very charming and inspiring. They've mastered the use of the fiery element and they're wise about business and they know when to take action and how to create harmonious human relationships in the process. The lovers with the king of wands, this is someone that's showing their love more than they talk about it. Yes, they want you. This is a vision that you commit to. This is someone that's full of charisma and their, it's their charisma is at an all time high. They're very attractive. The hero fit with the five of wands, this can represent building an organization. It's taken a hobby and turn it into a profitable business. The hero fit with the nine of cups, this is a blessed relationship. You're, you're lucky you could be marrying the person of your dreams or making a commitment. This is loyalty you can trust. You can trust the joy. Here's your advice from the Oracle deck. Earth Magic by Stephen Farmer. Aquarius, you've got Shaman, which represents ancient healing wisdom. Shaman. The deep, compassionate eyes of this Native American shaman portray the wisdom of one who has seen and who knows. He has witnessed vision, spirits, suffering, and joy, and knows that everything that exists has spirit's intentionality behind it. Able to travel beyond the veil of ordinary reality, the shaman's primary assignment is to discern and maintain the balance between what his human community takes from the natural world and what he gives back. When this relationship is out of balance, the shaman must do whatever is necessary to restore it. Balance equals healing. The shaman lives his life in ceremony and treats everything with reverence, including the great mystery of death, and even then the greater mystery of life. He works with his spirit helpers, including his ancestral spirits, to help him in his service to his people and to Earth Mother, providing a liaison between spiritual and physical worlds. Charged with relieving the suffering as one of his priorities, the shaman does so by first always tending to the spiritual wound, the source of all illness. These healing powers have been passed along over a millennia from the ancient ones, who knew the healing and curative powers of spirit. Aquarius, all illness, whether physical, emotional, or psychological, stem from an illness of the spirit. It may be due to soul loss, psychic intrusions, ancestral karma, or any other spiritual causes that could be contributing to the manifest condition for which you seek help. Whatever other mythologies or remedies you pursue, whether allopathic, alternative, or a combination, let the healing of your spirit be your priority. Know that the deepest spiritual wound is the illusion of being separate from Source, God, Great Spirit, or whatever name you give the Creator. It is the trick of the mind that creates this sense of separation. This is a time for deep healing, starting your, with your relationship with spirit. Call upon your spirit guides and ancestors to help you with any emotional, mental, or physical healing that you need. Call upon the Creator to assist you in mending any rift in your relationship with spirit. Choose thoughts that support wholeness and well-being. Allow any darker thoughts or shadows to appear as well, but simply observe them as they arise in the consciousness, then dissolve. See yourself as healed whole and complete, and it shall be. Thank you guys, Aquarius. I hope you stay tuned in and leave me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.